Hello guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to enable Hyper-V Manager in Windows 10. Now, in order for you to set up Hyper-V Manager, you need to be running a minimum Windows 10 Professional. Um, however, you know, most of our laptops or most of your desktop might not come with a Professional version. And as a bonus for those who actually want to set up uh, an, a virtualized environment but um, don't have Windows 10 Professional, I'm going to be showing you how to install Oracle VirtualBox instead and run your virtualized environment from there. All right, uh, if you're ready, I'm ready. Uh, let's go. So the first thing you want to ensure is that you actually have Windows 10 Professional version installed on your PC. And that's the first thing. The other thing you want to make sure is that your CPU support hardware virtualization and uh, I've you know from experience I, I know that most computers that support hardware virtualization uh, is usually disabled in BIOS so if you show your CPU support hardware virtualization the next thing you want to do you want to confirm from the BIOS uh, to be sure that hardware virtualization is actually enabled now how do you check if uh, your CPU supports hardware uh, support hardware virtualization and how do you check if you're running Windows 10 professional well it's pretty simple uh, all you gotta do is just navigate to um, this computer yeah if you're running Windows 10 this computer so you want to right click on this computer you want to go to properties that's going to bring up the properties window you can see uh, the device name you see the processor the processor is an i5 9300h uh, cpu running at 2 2.4 gigahertz uh, and i currently have 32 gigs of ram on this machine and if you if you go all the way down you notice that my edition of windows 10 is uh, windows 10 professional so my computer qualifies to run hyper-v manager and i also have enough ram to run hyper-v manager i was i would suggest if you're going to run hyper-v or any hypervisor for that matter you should have at least 16 gigs of ram at least 16 gigs of ram uh, 8 gigs uh, might not cut out then your computer will start to drag 8 gigs if you only want to run one virtual machine I would suggest that but if you're going to run multiple at least 16 gigs of RAM and um, the easiest way to find out if your CPU support hardware virtualization is to just grab the name of your CPU and just go on Google and just search um, does my CPU just put the name does Intel i5 9300H CPU support virtualization. It just put a Google search. Uh, a, a quick Google search will tell you if it supports it or not. Okay, having said all that, uh, now that we know that our computer is able to run Hyper-V and um, we have Windows 10 Professional, how do you enable it? Well, it's pretty simple to enable Hyper-V Manager. All you really need to do is just go into Windows features, yeah, features, and now uh, you enable Hyper-V. Uh, the easiest way, the shortcut, which I usually do, is just click on the Start button and type Features. So you gonna you know, just get where well, you're gonna see this option: Turn Windows Features On or Off. Click on that. That's gonna open up the Features window. Uh, like you can see if, or in my case I already have it enabled but in your case this is going to be unchecked uh, so what you want to do you want to expand this make sure all three are checked so we check this make sure all three of these have the check mark on it now in some cases it might not have the check mark you might even have a square box and you try to click uh, the check mark but it doesn't change all you need to do is just expand expand the option and make sure all the items on all the child items under it is checked uh, that should fix uh, the problem and you hit ok now it's going to tell you the system is going to restart uh, once the system restarts uh, you should be good to go uh, that's that's it that's how you enable hyper-v yeah just make sure make sure like i said make sure you no know, three things happens make sure you run a windows 10 professional that's the first thing 
The second thing you want to make sure that your CPU supports hardware virtualization. And how do you do that? Like I said, you just go on Google, you type in the name of your CPU, just put the quick question Does CPU, like for example, in my case, I have a i5 9300H. Um, if I'm going to do a Google search, I'm just going to put does i5 9300h support hardware virtualization then i'm going to read now the result and the articles that comes up and the other easier way to do it uh, which i found is you see if you go on uh, if you go on intel's website and just type the cpu intel will tell you the properties of that cpu and tell you if it indeed support hardware virtualization now once you confirm that it supports hardware virtualization the next thing you need to do is to go into your system BIOS and make sure hardware virtualization is enabled. Now it varies for different computers. I would say just do a Google search and uh, just go online and search how to get into the BIOS. You know, based on you know, based on your computer model, you can put the computer model and put how do you uh, like for instance, I run an ASUS. I have an ASUS. I just put how to get to the BIOS on an ASUS and input the model number. Uh, you should be able to uh, you should pull up some results that uh, will show you how to get into BIOS and that's about everything for enabling Hyper-V manager and and uh, and, and that's it so once once the computer restarts uh, you're gonna have Hyper-V manager just like I have right here you're gonna have something like this Hyper-V manager but yeah it's not gonna come with any virtual machine obviously I have two virtual machines already installed and uh, that's why you see them populated here. But once once your Hyper-V manager starts for the first time, you're really going to have Hyper-V manager and your computer name here. Your computer will become the server technically. All right, that's about it. And the next one, uh, which I said is a bonus video, is I'm going to show you how to install Oracle VirtualBox. Now it's pretty straightforward. The first thing you want to do, you want to head over to, you know, you want to head over to Oracle VirtualBox. Uh, how do I do that? Just do a quick Google search. Oracle VirtualBox. Now you, you you once you do a quick Google search, it's gonna bring up this result. You want to go to the this one that says Oracle Virtual Machine, and um, to save time, I'm just gonna go straight to the download. Just hit that. So we just downloaded Oracle Virtual Box by clicking on um, the Windows host. And um, so Oracle VirtualBox is fully downloaded, and all you need to do is just click on click on it to run it. And I already yeah. have it installed. Yeah, it's gonna tell you. It's gonna bring up this Windows. It's gonna bring up this window. Just click yes, and um, now we can start the installation process. Just gonna click next. I already have it installed. That's why it's bringing this up, but. Uh, if you don't have it installed already, you're just going to click next. So you're going to select the location where you want to have it installed. And um, just click next. And once you're done, just hit finish and it should be done. And it's pretty straightforward. It's not um, a difficult process, honestly. It's actually one of the easiest applications that you can ever install. And uh, once you're done installing that, uh, what I usually do is uh, I usually download the extensions what the extension does basically that uh, it gives you support for USB 2.0 USB 3.0 uh, it also gives you a virtual box RDP and it gives you the option to encrypt your disk and uh, it also support NVMe and uh, pixie boot for Intel cards and just a whole lot of stuff if you want to if you want to find out more you can just click on um, this link to open up the manual so you can see everything but what i usually do is uh, i'm going to download the, the virtual box now this is platform it's not platform specific you can download this extension and install it on all platforms so once this is done and uh, you have once this is done uh, oracle is done installing and you just run this and um, that's going to install the additional items and that's that's about it guys um, 
I'm going to see you guys in my next video. Yeah, in my next video, I'm going to be, uh, we're going to be doing some server install. I'm going to see you guys in my next video. Have a wonderful time. Bye-bye.